All right, everybody, Rob Ferretti here, and I'm gonna tell you about three things that I'm really annoyed with in life. And that's just because I expect more out of us. We're launching people to Mars. Like, like let's, let's take care of some stuff down here. And let me explain why. Now, this, this came to the top of my head now, as we just had a uh, tropical storm, Isaias, which just blew through like a day and a half ago. And you watch it coming up the coast, whatever, no big deal. Then I was legitimately at my house. We were working. We had people inside. A little windy, but nothing, nothing. Like, it's like a three-club wind to the, to the golfers. I mean, you're grabbing instead of a seven iron, you're grabbing a four iron. But it still, it wasn't like, like standing there blowing over. I didn't feel like it was anything more than just a standard storm. But my goodness, the havoc that that storm wreaked. It dropped trees all over the place. My brother's power's out. And they're telling him it's going to be five days until he gets power back. My apartment power's out. My parents' power is out because a tree fell on their house. My mother-in-law's power is out, but they have a generator. But it's like, good gracious, like, it's like I can't even tell you how many trees are down all over. I've never seen this much havoc from like a nonsense, like six hour storm in my life. But now we deal with it. Now my parents' house got it the worst. If you see the tree hit them twice, right? The tree fell over. And then like fast forward, took out the wires and everything like that. Cop is sitting outside. Fast forward a couple hours later, and then the rest of the tree came down, hit their house, hit the neighbor's house, punched a hole in their wall, destroyed their roof. They've got a notice of eviction, not eviction, but like a, a notice to evacuate because the house is unsafe. And it's just a hot mess. So that's gonna have to get fixed. Uh, smash my mom's car, smash my brother's Corvette. And it's actually, the Corvette wasn't so bad. Uh, they just scratches, it just, how it came down, the tree, like, like, and like, yeah, there's scratches on the car, but it didn't flatten the car or smash the car like it did to my mom's uh, Equinox, whatever she drives. Um, but it made me think, it's like, all right, cool. Power's out all over the place. This is ridiculous. You're telling people that they gotta wait five days to get power, go buy Generac stock, because now everybody's like, oh, I don't need a generator. Now it's like, I need a generator. So everyone, everyone goes, runs out and buys generators. You're probably too late, that, that stock bump already happened, so don't take that stock tip unless you really got money to burn. But at the end of the day, like everybody, generators make a lot of sense. I'm putting one in my house, and it's because our power grid sucks. And how do we fix our power grid? Well, why don't we do something very logical and take this technology that we've been using for, I don't know, since the late 1800s of overhead power wires and put them underground, right? That's, that's number one. That's the, like number one thing that annoys me that like, all right, I, I, I used to watch the Jetsons as a kid and you're like, oh, floating cars. I get it. We don't have floating cars, but you, you do look and you're like, you go watch, uh, if you go to Disney World and you ride the carousel of progress, right? You look and you're like, oh, look at all those power lines strewn all over the place. We still have that. I mean, you're talking early 1900s there is, is what they're depicting. And we still look down the street and you see the same row of telephone poles. So I put this up on my Instagram and I'm like, why do we still have this? And people are like, well, it's expensive and it's costly and it's harder to fix. Well, it's more reliable, right? It's underground and expensive. Jesus Christmas. We just spent $3 trillion to give people money for whatever. We spend money on all sorts of nonsense. We're, we're lo you think it's cheap to lob rockets up into space and put satellites up there and, oh, let's just send somebody to Mars. What the hell? Let's just check out another moon mission. That's not cheap either. Now you have something that, like, you have to, it's called capital improvement. You have to progress through life. And you go to any city, all the utilities are underground. You go to a lot of, like, nice areas, utility poles are underground. You put them underground, what do you get? You get one less thing for somebody to hit with a car, right? And you can't get hit the telephone pole and kill yourself. That's what we're all about, like, protecting people and, and preventing them from hurting themselves. That's a good place to start. No power outages, because the power, the only time you have a power outage is if, I don't know, if something blows up underground, but that's going to be, it, there's, the power grid's never going to be 100%, but at least you make that accessible, you put it underground, we've got the money to do it. I mean, if you think about all the money we waste, like this is a capital improvement that gets amortized over 30, 50, 100 years, just lay it underground. I'm putting in the power at my house, pole, underground all the way to my house. Wasn't very expensive. 
I saw them do it. I saw exactly how the process worked. Now, I think that's something we should do. Now it's also, you don't have people getting electrocuted. Downed wires, oh my God, guy drove over a down wire, got electrocuted. That all goes away if you do this, right? So that's number one. And this is just like me a little amped up right now because of this. Number two, and it really bothers me, bathrooms. And this is a great time with coronavirus, right? You, you, no matter how clean you are, to have a bathroom, a public bathroom door, any bathroom door for that matter, that opens in, like, so to, to get out of the bathroom, you have to grab the grubby handle and pull it open. You just washed your hands, but I just saw three other dudes shaking their stick and then like going right past the sink and walking right out the door. So now I just shook his stick. Like, I don't care. Like you could, you could go over and like, there's no garbage can next to it. So you got the paper towel or maybe it's just an air dryer. You can't get out of there without touching a very compromised handle, if you know what I mean. So why doesn't every bathroom door in the country and I have no, in the globe, why is it something where the bathroom door to get out, you just push, you push just like the handle. When you go into the bathroom, nobody cares. Everybody's hands are dirty when you go into the bathroom. So you pull the door out to get into the bathroom, you push to get out and you're maintaining your cleanliness and, and you're not, you're, you're not compromising the hands that you just cleaned. Now we're all walking around with hand sanitizer. So I guess it doesn't make a difference, but like, that's something that's always boggled my mind or the little maze, you know, the little like, like half wall, half wall, half wall. So you just sort of you get the privacy of the bathroom, but you could just snake your way right out without touching anything. I think that's gotta be a thing like everywhere. I don't know why, like even at a restaurant, make it like men's room that way, women's room that way. You just snake right in, no doors to deal with. I just think that anything post sink in a bathroom, it's unsanitary to, to have, there's no mandatory wash your hands or we're gonna punch you in the face. You run into a situation where it's unsanitary. Lastly, something that boggles my mind, Cell phone reception, but we're talking 5G. Oh my God, we're doing all this stuff. I can't even get reception. I leave my house and go through Spark Hill, New York, right? There's a little town called Spark Hill, New York, down by like Sneeding's Landing, right there on 9W and uh, whatever that little crossroad is. And I lose reception every day. It's been a dead zone forever. And I know other places that are dead zones. How can I be nine miles from Manhattan and have clear visibility to the sky everywhere you look and my cell phone drops calls that like and I switched over from Verizon to Google Fi which uses T-Mobile and Sprint still it's a dead zone for everybody it makes no sense to me why we, like we're talking about putting a thousand Starlink satellites up there to give like na global uh, high speed internet but I can't even call the phone call driving down 9W that's ridiculous to me like I get like, you know, we're not spending the infrastructure to go and drop cell towers in the middle of Nebraska when there's nothing for 80 miles in any direction. Makes sense. Or like, oh, we're, we're trying to like not do it in the mountain ranges where it's more expensive and we have to have more cell towers. 10 minutes from Manhattan, like that, this whole area, like I should have as good of a reception as you could possibly get in elevators, underground, above ground. This should all be like connected. And those three things really chat my, chat my cheeks, if you know what I mean. Grind my gears. And this whole, it's been a long day or two, you know? But those are my thoughts on that. I agree, disagree, whatever you want. I can't use, the, the rationale behind it can't be that it's expensive because we spend so much money on everything. Oh yeah, yeah a couple billion dollars over there. Oh, we're studying snails, there's a couple billion dollars for you. So you can't say like, well, it's a million dollars a mile to put that in. A, it shouldn't be, but B, spend the damn money because it'll make everybody's life better and it's in the interest of public safety. All of these are in the interest of the public safety. Imagine you're driving and you get in a, a car accident and you can't call because you have no reception. I mean, I, I guess that could happen remotely too, but just work with me here. Get, throw me a bow. Rob Ferretti, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll get back to car stuff, but this is just stuff I had to get off my chest. Who wants to fight? wants to throw hands. So you guys are familiar with my other company, Adventure Drives, right? Well, we're going to be going to Scotland in October. We're going to be doing Scotch distilleries, playing golf at St. Andrews if you want to do that, walking around, seeing lakes, waterfalls, driving the North Coast. It's going to be an amazing trip. Prices start as low as $2,500 per person for the shorter trip in Scotland. If you're interested in going, check out the link in the description.